so this is actually quite an interesting article from the Yorkshire Post. Now, I've said before that a lot of people up north originally voted, maybe for the very first time, um, were tricked, like, you know, Boris Johnson said, that this would be the Brexit referendum, quote, to get Brexit done. So they voted Tory for the first time to, well, I want to get Brexit done, but haven't really realised that the consequences of what they're actually voting for, because, well, the government won't be honest and tell them what Brexit actually means and what it, they want to do, uh, which is why I say, come January, we're going to see the true Tory agenda online and you're going to see things just go from bad to worse for these areas. You think you're being ignored now? Imagine writing to your Tory MP about the fact that you are under even more stressful living circumstances than you were before, you're living on benefits which aren't enough to feed your family and the Tories are cutting them back because well you know gotta cut gotta cut money somewhere they will say and of course ooh people People living on this princely sum of 90, 94 pounds a week. How how dare they live on such a princely, ungodly sum. That's far too much money for people to be living on. And of course, more child poverty will increase. And of course, reliance on food banks will continue to go up. But this is interesting from the Yorkshire Post. So... So, uh, the Yorkshire Post, title of the article... Oh, oh, Christ, again. Why are you... Oh. I'm not even with Virgin Media. That's the, <laughs> the second time that's popped up. So, disappearing Brexit divisions leaves votes up for grabs, the Yorkshire Post says. Uh, one of the hopes of Boris Johnson's administration after his election victory and the subsequent passing of the revised withdrawal agreement was that in 2020, Brexit would dominate far less of the national conversation in the very often toxic way it had done, even with the agreement on future trading deals with the EU still to be decided. There is no doubt that this has been achieved, which is to the benefit of the country, though unexpectedly and tragically, its place at the top of the news agenda has all too swiftly been replaced by the coronavirus pandemic, which has brought tens of thousands of deaths and a deep recession. A new research conducted by the European Council on Foreign Relations suggests that Brexit tribalism is started to ebb away among voters, with only one in five of the Leave supporters who carried the Conservatives to victory in the so-called Red Wall, traditional Labour heartlands, currently saying they intend to back the Tories again at the next election. 23% of those polled says that they will go back to Labour, while 46% <coughs> are undecided or planning not to vote at all. Which is even more worrying. Um, please, please do vote. <laughs> we can't stress that enough. Please, for God's sakes, please vote. It's important that you vote. So, the speed of the recovery from the historic major shock caused by the coronavirus will undoubtedly play a part in all those voters and where they decide to turn next. As whether will the government can actually still deliver on its promise to level up the country amidst an economic and financial crisis... Oh. What's going on? What? Oh, God, Christ in the back. There we go. So it's one of these annoying adverts. There we go. So equally, the party is uh, the party is likely to play into cultural divides on issues like immigration, as as is being seen with the approach to the Channel Crossing, as a way of reinforcing its differences to Labour. But for now, at least, Brexit is on the back burner in the minds of voters. So, this is, um, you know, what I generally expected. And we'll just go back to those um, numbers because, again, they're quite interesting to, to see. So, 
as we've uh, said before, a lot of these people, I said they're not going to, you know, vote Tory again. They only held their no noses in the voting box to vote Tory this time because, again, they wanted to get Brexit done. And, you know, it's not going to benefit them in the long run. Um, again, promises were made to them that cannot be um, relied upon. You know, there is a reason why Nigel Farage is trying to distance himself and starting to say that, um, you know, he didn't promise that Brexit would make people's lives better. Interestingly enough. But we'll go over those numbers again. So according to this uh, study, um, so only one in five of the Leave supporters are actually... Um, where is it? Oh, there. So only one in five are currently saying that they intend to back the Tories again at the next election. That is a massive decrease. And you know, you've got 23% saying that they will go back to Labour. That's again a, a significant increase back to Labour. And of course you've got 46% who are undecided or planning not to vote at all. Undecided, I can deal with. Undecided, I, c I can find, I can deal with you. You know, at an election, it's fine to be undecided. You know, we can make the arguments and you can make your decisions based on uh, the arguments that are being put forward by MPs and indeed the manifesto. I can deal with that. That's, that's perfectly fine. What's worrying is that it doesn't say what the split of those who are not planning not to vote at all that's worrying because it's just 46 percent undecided or planning not to vote at all i wish we could have two of those different numbers of what 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 was each because i tell you now that's quite worrying from a from a, from a perspective of people not wanting to vote i can't stress this enough people you should always vote. Always, always, always vote. You know, um, I tell people, don't vote on single issues. Vote for the party that most represents on you. Sometimes you're going to vote for a party that may not completely 100 represent what you believe. However, you know that there are certain things in the manifesto that you want. And that's fine. That is fine if you want to vote for that. Even if you end up voting for the Conservatives and the, you know, the Tories, fine. At least you've voted. But for God's sakes, vote. I can't stress just how important it is to really vote. And I often feel like um, we in the UK, we need to stress this more, just how important it really is to vote. And we've seen this countless numbers of times that the people who don't vote, if they actually turned up to the polls and voted, could make a massive change in this country. Either way. For either parties. So, please, please do vote. But, as is very clear there, um, I think a lot of these seats are going to go back to, uh, to Labour. I definitely think that this was just a one-time thing and people are just going to vote for it. You know, it was branded as the uh, Brexit election, although it really sh shouldn't, have, shouldn't have been. Um, you know, a general election is more than just a question on one thing. Um, and now you've got the Tories in charge for the next four to five years and presiding over yet more austerity that they are going to put on people. You know, we're already hearing rumours of uh, Ricky uh, is going to uh, Rishi is going to put a spending squeeze in place, which means more austerity. And we did tell you, voting for the Tories would mean more austerity. It's kind of what they do. But anyway, uh, please do. Uh, like this video, share it around, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and of course there are links down below should you like to support the channel in a different way as well. And always, we'll see you next time.